Hello friends, my name is AJ and in this is very short video I'm going to teach you how to run Java classes from the terminal or the command line if you are on Windows. It's actually quite simple to do and um, I'm going to be showing you how to do it in this video. But without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so here I have a basic example of a class that I may want to run from my terminal. So it says, and this is the name multiplier class, which I have saved onto my desktop. And you can see over here that it has, so it says um, that this will take in two parameters, right? One is going to be a name to repeat, and the other is going to be the number of times that name will repeat. So the example is, if I put in an input of my name AJ, and then I have eight over here as the other number, it's going to repeat uh, eight times in the output, right? But let's say I want to do this, but I actually want to call this from my terminal. How will I set it up, right? Because usually, in this case, you may do just a simple print statement um, inside of, you know, a main method. So how do we actually do this? Well, we're actually going to type out a main method. So to do it, that would be public static void main, right? And then in parameters, you have string r. That's pretty standard, right? But a lot of times you may be writing these uh, main, met main method functions and you may have never actually realized what these arguments are for, right? You have this random arguments, which is supposed to be in uh, an array of strings. And you may have no idea, you know, what what is the actual purpose of that? And that is actually where this comes in, right? The actual purpose of these arguments is if you are running, for example, this main method from a command line or you're running it from some other uh, source. And most people don't need to use it, right? Or use that main method. But, you know, in this case, if you were to run this within your IDE, you may do something like a Java scanner to actually have your inputs here. But that is where these arguments are going to be used. So for example, and we're going to assume that the person types in both of these values. So the first thing is that we want to get the name um, that the person inputted as the first parameter. And of course, the name is a string, right? Names are strings, and this is a array of strings, so that will work out perfectly. So all I have to do is I just have to create a string variable that represents my input value. So this would be my input name, and this is going to be equal to args uh, zero right over here. And the reason it's equal to this is because we want the first value from the string array. So again, if you don't remember, when you're getting values out of an array, zero is the first value because um, it works with indexes, right? So when you are having an array, um, the, the specific location of each value inside of an array is based on something called an index. And indexes are kind of, again, like the street address, you know, of your, of your house on a street. But um, they are numbers. So when you are having any sort of array, the first value inside of an array is always at index zero. You know, logic would say, okay, well, the first value is usually going to be one. But in this case, because it's the first value in Java, it's actually zero. Zero is the first um, index value for an array. So that is how we get the first value is we simply access the args like an array. And we're going to assume that the that this particular array is going to be initialized with the values of my parameter when I actually run it within the command line. All right. So now the next thing I need to do is I need to get a number, right? And my number is going to be an integer. So I can say um, int um, num times to repeat. And now what you may actually notice here is that I'm trying to get an integer variable. But at the same time, my arguments are an array of strings. So how do I convert a string over to an integer, right? And, the, and this is actually done using the parse int. So in order to do this, you have to type in integer dot parse int, parse int, just like this. And then your input into this parse int uh, method is going to be args one because this is going to be the second argument. Remember, kind of the index is always one less than the number it is. So if it's the second argument, it's gonna be at index number one. So I will simply set number of times to repeat to um, integer.parson1, and I will now put a semicolon there, all right? And now the last thing I'm going to do here is I need to actually do what I wanted to do, where it's going to repeat this this many times, right, as my input. So this will just be a simple for loop that I'm going to set up um, with num, uh, num times, wait, sorry, i is less than num times 
two repeat. All right, and this would be I, pl I plus plus right over here. So you can see that I've created my for loop and then simply I will print out and I want to do here system dot out dot uh, print man a lot of spelling mistakes today so system dot out dot print I don't want to do print line because I want this all to be in one line like this so I'm going to simply print out the input name just like that and then I'm also going to do system dot out dot print and then I'm going to print out a space as well all right so that should be actually all of the code here that I need for my for my actual class. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it. And once I'm saved, I can now open up the terminal, right? So I'm going to go and to open up terminal. And this is very small, so I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can actually see what I'm typing. All right, that's a little bit better. And so now if I want to access first my actual uh, Java file, I need to actually navigate to where my file is. And because my file is going to be in my desktop folder, I can simply say CD desktop uh, to go directly into my desktop folder, which you can see right over here. So now all I have to do to access this is I have to simply type in the Java and then name multiplier, which is going to be the name of my file. I, you don't need to, you can include .java, but you don't need to. And then I can simply put in my parameters separated by spaces. And you can see over here that there was a, let's see, uh, could not load. So what you do need to do, I think, is you have to kind of um, at least compile this once so that the class is actually um, created, the class file inside of your desktop, but you can see now it actually is. And now let's see if we can run the same thing. If I save this and I go into terminal and I do this again, you can see right over here that it prints out right all of my in my um, output right over here it prints out my name you can see it prints out my name eight times so that is all you have to do to actually run a java file from the terminal so again to recap and this works with command line as well on windows so you can do it using the command prompt as well but all you have to do is you simply you need to utilize the args um the args string array that is already built into the main method and then from the main method, you're simply going to um, get these variables out using, you know, uh, getting the value, the first value and the second value out of the args array. Now, one thing that you probably should do, and if you're, you know, doing this for some important project, you probably want to actually include some if statements, you know, to make sure that, okay, if these values are actually non-existent, what do you do, right? Like in the case of if I don't um, input a actual number, right, properly, maybe you want to do an if statement to, um, ask the user to actually input a number in case you forgot to. Those are things that are that are also very important when you're actually working on a certain project. But this is um, this is kind of the basic functionality. Assuming the user actually types it incorrectly, this is the basic functionality. You simply need to access values out of the args um, array list or the args string array. It's not an array list, it's just an array. Save them to these variables and then you can use them. And when you do system.out, it will print perfectly fine to the terminal just like this over here. All right, everyone, if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, feel free to like and subscribe for more content. And as always, thanks for watching.